Hello, meteorologist Hunter Ward here. With an update, we've got Hurricane Ian that has developed in the uh, Caribbean and uh, will be moving through Cuba as a uh, strong hurricane as it goes through some rapid intensification over the next 24 to 48 hours. And then it will head uh, north towards the United States. Looks to be somewhere in Florida. We've got a high pressure that uh, we're watching as well over the uh, next three days to see if that's going to kind of turn the storm in a little bit. But uh, from what I can tell, it looks like Western North Carolina will receive some form of rainfall this coming weekend. Whether it's flooding rainfall, not exactly sure just yet. We'll see how the models pan out, but they have been pushing this storm back further. There was a Thursday time frame at one point in time, but now it seems more Saturday, late Friday, uh, kind of depending on what models you're looking at. But uh, let's go ahead and turn around to my screen. I want to thank Red Wolf Contracting Services and Farm Bureau Insurance of Buncombe County on Lester Highway. Our featured agent today, Daniel Jensen. Really appreciate them as uh, my gold sponsors. A nice week uh, that is turning out to be. Uh, this uh, generated forecast is uh, showing 61 and uh, the high on Friday with some rain moving in. That could be later on. Grimes Tice Anderson, downtown Asheville, camera. Beautiful around town. Hardly a cloud in the sky. Bannerelt.com live camera as well. You can see Grandfather Mountain there in the background. And uh, just looking around town, the uh, Haywood County Farm Bureau camera out in Haywood County. Beautiful views at the Better Homes and Garden camera in uh, Bryson City. You can see the caboose down there as well as that buffers just a little bit. But uh, beautiful views around town as a couple of our cameras will be opening up a little bit more here soon. The Blaylock Excavation camera out in the uh, Waynesville Valley over there. You can check all of those cameras out. We've got uh, 15 live cameras. We've got a few more that are going to come on here soon all around uh, western North Carolina covering, I believe, five counties. So uh, you can kind of watch the weather come in. You can watch this hurricane approach, but uh, hurricane in. So let's go ahead and get into the discussion about what's going to occur in Western North Carolina, because I know that's why you're listening. Uh, I'm somewhat of a local, uh, you know, and you guys look to me to tell you what's going to happen in Western North Carolina. So uh, it looks the national hurricane forecast is a major hurricane uh, category three or higher as it approaches Florida, making landfall Somewhere around St. Petersburg area, the Tampa area, as it, most of the models have it weakening. But uh, then kind of what happens, how long it stalls out, what that upflow does to Western North Carolina is all kind of relative and uh, will de be determined by the strong high pressure that's going to develop. So uh, let's go ahead. I'll show you what the GFS model is showing. This is the uh, the 12Z run that just came out. We'll uh, run this forecast loop. You can see in down here and uh, watch as it traverses the Gulf. Uh, pressure in the 940s, that uh, is equivalent to usually around a high end category three, category four. That's just gonna hammer somewhere along the, the Florida coast here. Uh, I don't know if, you know, the uh, the northwest quadrant is going to kind of rake this area, so not ideal here. And I think it's kind of just going to spin itself out somewhere. That's what a lot of the models have, just making a slow landfall. The only steering that we have here, as that jumped ahead on me, is this high pressure right up here. Spinning clockwise, it's going to turn this storm in. That's what's catching it. That's what's not allowing it to recurve because the natural curvature of the earth pulls this storm out to sea and the high pressure here is what's going to actually catch it and keep it kind of embedded and then it's going to head towards western north carolina as you can see this the gfs runs it out and this is saturday late friday we could be seeing some showers at sunset and then into saturday morning a heavy band of rain moves through 
And uh, throughout the day, we continue to see those showers, potentially more showers developing throughout the day. Sunday, as that low pressure just kind of, you know, equals out as the high pressure just funnels in, you know, air of equal density and pressure. That's kind of the motion of the atmosphere trying to balance it all out. And in between that balance area is where you have the storms and the lift. So with that, this storm's going to move off the coast, it looks like, by the time the work week happens. You could see some lingering storms as it kind of strings out. It, what it looks like is a is a awesome winter storm, uh, but timing is uh, about three months too early on that. Uh, but, you know, this is kind of what we see with those high pressures coming down. They kind of bat it up, and uh, there's another one that just, drops in from Canada and it's going to bring some cold air to the northeast but it just kind of runs into it as the storm tries to make its way north and then just moves off so we'll show you that let's also show you the uh the European model is a little bit more amped up and uh actually wanted to show you really quick uh the localized rainfall totals because we have been seeing these vary just a bit but as far as, you know, through Sunday, these models are indicating three and four inches. I'm here, Cashers, Glenville, Franklin area. But as you get closer to Asheville, you're going to see a little bit of downsloping come into play. The direction is, is in a direction that you, we typically do see some downsloping. So that rainfall will diminish as you get closer to the North Carolina, Tennessee border. And so... You know, around an inch or two is uh, kind of what the GFS is showing. As we progress it out a little bit more, it'll show a little bit higher totals. And some isolated flooding will be possible where this band kind of enhances, rise, it reaches the mountain. That water kind of rings out of the clouds when it is condensed by those mountains as it flows up. So from that, we... Uh, we, we really have to uh, have to be concerned about uh, what's going on and uh, forgot that my uh, picture was not on there. So uh, we'll get that fixed here on the next video. But uh, anyways, so rainfall, you know, two inches or so is what I think around the Asheville area is going to see now more along the Blue Ridge escarpment, which is those areas where the mountains reach the, uh, the Piedmont, those areas are going to see higher totals of probably four to six inches in my opinion. And uh, let's show you as well what the European model is illustrating. So a little bit higher rainfall totals, this pocket along the Piedmont, looks to me like a danger area if you take the European solution at uh, you know face value and you know you can see my cursor up to six and a half inches of rainfall on that cursor and uh, just right along that Blue Ridge escarpment where it hits the uh, the foothills area that's that's what this area right here along the Blue Ridge Escarpment as you reach the mountains of North, North Carolina is considered. Asheville, uh, two to three inches face value for the European model. So you can see a varying amount of totals. We were seeing, you know, five and six inches yesterday. So uh, don't think that those totals can't show back up, but I uh, don't want to nail this forecast down until probably sometime on Thursday, but just giving you guys a heads up of uh, what I expect to see here in uh, in the next five to seven days. So let's look a little bit about uh, structure on this as well. Uh, we'll go over to the uh, HWRF model, and you can see this is just another hurricane model. Uh, it has pretty much a direct hit on the uh, western portion of Cuba and then moves up actually just kind of rides the coast along Florida uh, with a good feeder band that, you know, hits St. Pete, doesn't look like it makes landfall completely, but then uh, a little bit farther north uh, as a ragged eye, it kind of just loses its complete feed as Florida kind of takes over. And uh, but it moves into Western North Carolina as well. So it does seem like we're going to see some type of effects. Winds, you know, I'm thinking 30 
mile per hour gusts might be our peak around here. Uh, this thing doesn't look like it's going to keep its form and uh, core for very long. It's going to get shredded by the high pressures that I mentioned up north. So uh, it's just something to think about and uh, consider this weekend. I think that uh, you should uh, review your flood plan. You know, just really kind of think about those things. And uh, for the leaf lookers, uh, this is probably going to blow a good bit of leaves off the trees. But uh, I'll have more information for you here coming in the next several days. So uh, check back and uh, we'll nail those rainfall forecasts down. Have a good evening.